Ladies and gentlemen, if you want to start programming, you want to learn how to code, this is the video for you. Whether or not you want to go into blockchain or data science, you want to become a UX UI developer, these tips are going to help you get started. And I'll share with you the things that really helped me on my journey in becoming a developer. So without further ado, let's hash it out. And really quickly before we dive into the tips, if it's your first time here and we're just now meeting, my name is Forrest. I'm a blockchain developer, a full stack developer that is in industry. And I created this channel right here to help you learn about cryptocurrency, to learn about innovative technology, and to help people learn how to get involved in this movement towards the next generation of technology and business. So if all that sounds really cool to you, make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the little bell notification button so you can get notified every time I create a new piece of content on this channel. Thank you in advance, let's dive into it. Now my very first tip, and to me the most important one, and one that I wish that I took more seriously during my journey, is to stick with the fundamentals early on and master them. If you wanna think about programming in some sort of analogy, think of it like a pyramid. At the very base, you have all the core programming concepts like data structures, like how code is put together, learning how to write good quality code on a team, and quite frankly, just how to do certain things in code the more efficient way. If you learn these things early on and it becomes second nature to you, that's a great base on which you can build other programming skills until you get to that very tippy top of the pyramid and you're doing really detail oriented stuff in a programming framework. Now, if some of what I just said makes no sense to you, that's totally fine. If you're a complete beginner, start with the beginning and master those fundamentals. The place that I would recommend going to master fundamentals, regardless of your skill level, is Skillshare.com. Now, I left a link down in the description below for you to check out. Skillshare has an amazing array of different classes taught by real world developers to teach you all sorts of different programming languages from start to finish. This is a great place to pick up new skills and every time that I wanna learn a new language, I pretty much always turn to Skillshare. So I use it every single week, I would say, to learn something new about programming. If you are looking to get more in the blockchain space, there is another video that I created about how to become a blockchain developer specifically, that's right here in the YouTube card. But the TLDR on that one is to join the Ivan on Tech Academy. There's a free $1 trial for you to see all the different courses that Ivan on Tech has created on how to become a blockchain developer and how to start developing even if you have no development experience. So there's JavaScript and C++ knowledge in there as well. So that's a great place to start. So Skillshare, Ivan on Tech Academy, learn the fundamentals, master them. Let's move on to tip number two. Tip number two sort of piggybacks off of tip number one, and that is to start with JavaScript or Python. When you're going to start your programming journey, you wanna pick a language that is ubiquitous. You wanna pick a language that's used all over the place. So there's a lot of documentation, there are a lot of examples, and there are a lot of places that you can use that language. The way to learn programming is by doing. So you wanna use something that you can quickly get a job in or quickly use on your day-to-day -day life to create cool stuff and learn as you go. So I would recommend if you wanna get into blockchain development, you wanna create a mobile app or you want to develop web applications, I would go JavaScript. That's a really widely used language and there's tons of support out there for it. If you wanna go the data science route, however, I would recommend you go Python because that is a functional language that's really great with data processing. So if that's the case, I would go Python, but either one of the two, you really can't lose. That's where I'd start. Start there and then you can branch out. Tip number three is when you're learning, don't just read code online. You wanna actually use it. You wanna run that code and learn how it works. So a lot of times when you're developing something and you wanna use an example, You'll read through that example, and of course, when you're looking at an example of code, it's just like a math problem where you have the answer. It makes perfect sense when everything there is laid out for you. But then when you wanna go and recreate that and do that math problem on your own without the answer, it's pretty difficult. That same thing happens in code. If you look at a completed file of code or you look at an entire application, everything makes sense because your brain can rationalize what's happening as it's running. However, as soon as you try and go replicate that process that you saw, on your own, it becomes more difficult. So whether you're on a GitHub page or you're on a Medium article or a Hacker Noon article, 
Go ahead and try and run that code for yourself, step through it and really understand why things are done the way they are. Most good tutorials will give you an explanation that will really help you. Now let's move on to tip number four, which is when it's not working, take a walk. I can't tell you the number of times that I've sat down to try and solve a problem that I'm having with code and I spend hours and hours and hours and hours trying to figure this one thing out and try and figure out why something's not working. When in reality, the best approach has always been for me to take a walk, take a break, go get a snack, take a walk around the block and then come back to that problem. And I will tell you that nine times out of 10, it's a silly mistake that you've made with your code. And if I had just taken a break sooner and come back with fresh eyes, with a fresh mind, I would have solved it much faster. So that would be the advice that I give to you and it's something I've implemented in my daily life as a developer. Take a walk when things aren't working and you can't figure it out. Spend no more than 20 minutes trying to solve one little measly issue that you can't figure out. Take a walk around the block, come back, and I guarantee you, you will see it from a new perspective. Tip number five, ask for help. There are so many resources out there, including myself. If you have questions, leave them in the comments down below. There are so many developers out there at varying levels of experience from you know five-year developers, which is just about where I am in industry. And then you have people who have been in the industry for 20 years or 30 years working on some of the earliest forms of programming computers. These people are an amazing resource for you as you learn to develop. And I would recommend that you try and find people, whether that's online on forums, on YouTube, like you are right now, or just friends in real life, asking them for help, finding people with experience and having them give you advice as you start your development journey. Tip number six is go medium or go home. I really, really love medium.com. It's a, that blogging website. I'm sure you've probably all heard of it. And it's a place where anyone can write their very own blog content. And there's so much good programming content on there. So what I do every single day is I have a daily digest on medium that I get an email about programming in JavaScript, an email about programming in Ethereum and an email about programming in Python every day. I pick one article from each of those emails every morning. I read it and I learn something new about programming. And by doing that every single day over the course of months, even years, you'll be shocked at how much knowledge you can absorb from other people that are really into programming, including what not to do programming. There are a lot of articles that are like anti patterns to tell you, hey, don't do this in your code, or they'll teach you a new skill that you should do when you're coding. So these are really great ways. I would go on medium.com, create an account, just start consuming programming content. Tip number seven, forget the myth that all programmers, all successful programmers need to have a college degree in computer science. It's simply not the case. Even if you went to school for history, you went to school for English, you went to school for political science, or you didn't go to school at all, you can be a programmer. I'm staunchly a believer in the fact that everyone can be a programmer regardless of how your brain works, regardless of whether or not you're good at math. The rhetoric that gets fed to people, oh, like I, I you just can't program because you're not good at math or you didn't get a degree. All that's nonsense. You definitely can. You just have to find the way that your brain works to help you make sense of programming because it's a very different way of thinking than what we're used to. Regardless of whether or not you got a degree, if you put your mind to it and you commit the time and effort and you find good mentors, you will become a programmer and a good one at that. Tip number eight is to throw yourself into the world of code. Don't be shy about trying to create your own projects. If you have an idea, try and program it, even if you can't figure it out. Just the process of trial and error trying to get to that solution will be really helpful in developing your programming skills. The only way to become an apt programmer, to become a good programmer, is by programming constantly. Practice makes perfect. It's a cliche, but it is really true, especially in this instance. If you're not programming every single day, try to program every single week. Set up some time on the weekend outside of your current nine to five to just brush up your programming skills on the interwebs. One strategy that's worked for me is I threw myself into projects where I didn't know what I was doing and the pressure of knowing I have a deadline and I have to get something done really helped light a fire for me to get those things done, to pick up those skills and to build new knowledge. Tip number nine is to start thinking in code. I can't remember exactly when this happened, but I think it's probably about a year into my programming journey as I learned how to do all of this stuff 
and I started to understand how web applications and mobile apps were put together and how data is formatted and structured and manipulated on servers that run our modern internet driven lives, I started to think about how the website that I'm interacting with or the mobile app that I'm interacting with on a daily basis like Facebook or Instagram, I really thought about how that worked and what was happening behind the scenes. And I was thinking programmatically about how the teams behind those applications implemented the functionality that I was using. And over time, you start to be able to pick apart these common patterns and themes and frameworks that all applications really use. And I think that's really helpful when you try and build your own projects. So start trying to think in code and practice. Even when you're not practicing coding, you can practice the conceptual part of building an application. And tip number 10, this is another one that's kind of cliche, but it is so, so true. You have to trust the process. You have to trust that your first three to six months is going to be a really tough uphill battle and picking up all these new concepts. It's like learning to speak a new language. It's really tough at first, then you start to get your feel for it. You start to speak it every day or every week and it becomes more and more and more clear to you and it becomes less of a foreign language and more of a second language to you. The same thing here applies to programming. You have to trust the process, you have to keep at it, you have to keep trying and keep practicing and you will get there. Eventually you start to understand things well enough that your learning becomes exponential. You pick up new skills faster, then you start to teach others, which then reinforces your skills. This is the path to becoming a really true good programmer that is employable at all facets of the industry. So guys, those are my top 10 tips for how to become a better programmer, how to learn to be a programmer, even if you have no experience whatsoever. If there are any that I missed or that you really feel as a programmer yourself that you think should be in here, let me know in the comments down below because I'm really curious to see what people think about all of that. And of course, do not forget to subscribe for more weekly content about cryptocurrency, innovative tech, programming, and all that sort of thing. Thank you guys very much. Cheers.